I've got a great one for you today. We're going to be taking a look at the Fantex M25 140mm class fan. We're specifically looking at the NAR RGB one, but I expect both to be exactly the same. First, some spec information. It is a bog standard 140mm class fan. There's its amperage, RPM, CFM, H2O, warranty is 5 years, and mean time between fair is 30,000 hours. The first graph is my case simulation test. Uh, you use this graph depending on what size computer case you plan on buying if you're going to use this as a case fan. The 6 part is representative of a short throw distance, meaning if you put the fan at the bottom of your camera case and you blow it up towards your GPU, that would be a short throw distance. Or in a front to back airflow uh, mini ITX case, uh, assuming that the case holds 120 mm class fan at the bottom, that would be the assumed length of that case. Uh, you'd be looking at that data point for how effective this fan is at blowing air through that computer going through the case. At the 9-inch mark, it's a compact tower. Think a case that can hold a standard MATX or uh, ATX motherboard, since the same length, and a GPU of equivalent length, that front-to-back airflow type design. So it assumed 220 millimeter class fans in it. And if you're buying that, you look at that data point. Then we have the 11-inch mark. A uh, case that can hold 320 mm class fans or a standard 360 AAO. Think uh, Meshify 2C, uh, Corsair 550D, something like that in terms of computer case. You'd be looking at these data points. And if you're looking at truly large towers like the Front Design Torrent or Terra, not Terra, North XL, you'd be looking at this data point 340 mm class fans. It's a big tower. Now, I like to compare all my fans against a standardized control fan. It is base 3 parts A12X5 to 1 part A14, and it's a blended together mathematically fan. It doesn't actually exist in reality. It's assumed 130 millimeter class fan. So fans that beat it, I consider good. Fans that don't beat it, I consider not great performers, unless they're, if they're close to it, I consider them okay. But the M25 appears to be a okay performer. It's meeting it fairly closely, but it's a little bit underperforming. At 100% paid on fan signaling, well, the M25 is beating my control fan, so it's doing quite well there. And compared to other fans I've tested, it's bottom middle of the pack in noise normalized results, but it drops off very steeply at the 14.5 inch mark, so it's not particularly effective in larger towers. So I'd be focusing on using it in smaller cases, or if you're going to load up your case with two or three of these fans, it'll do adequately but there are better options out there at 100 cent pedom fan signaling well it's still underperforming compared to other fans pretty significantly there are just better options out there so we're going to have to focus on the value proposition later on in this video in terms of this noise results in decibels every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise volume so do note that and it's doing okay it's a little bit towards the bottom but it's not a bad result at the nine inch mark when we take a look at the noise values in the calculation of SOAN, I have a whole video on SOAN, please refer to that, but it basically takes decibels and makes it a linear equation, but in the end result is it compacts quieter sounds so they all look closer together and makes noisier things stretch out further off to the right side here. So once again, it's sitting towards the bottom, and there are other fans that are just better options that move more air for the same loudness, basically. Now on to performance through my CPU air cooler, the Noctua U12A, and I do have a thicker radiator now, the uh, Nemesis uh, GTX 140, I think it is, it's fairly thick, high density, and the airspeed going through it is equivalent to through as my air cooler, so I'm not posting those results at this time, also I don't have enough of a data set going forward right now. So in terms of blade efficiency, which is this left graph, RPM versus air speed, it is a very efficient blade design. It's beating on the control fan. Now in terms of noise versus air speed, well, the control fan is pretty well crushing the M25. Mind, it's not a huge crush, not a huge destroying it, but it is significantly better. When we compare it against other fans, noise normalized results, the M25 ends up in the middle of the pack. It's not a bad place for it to be. But there are just other fans at this noise normalized value that are better. And the noise noise level was generated based off of the A12, the A12X25 
running at around 1,300 RPM, which I found fairly quiet. Uh, so that's why that noise level is selected. At 100% pitot fan signaling, the M25 is once again in the middle of the pack. It's not a bad place for it to be compared to other fans around it at uh, its relative airspeed. It is on the quieter side, which is a good thing for this fan. So I'd call that a win. Now in terms of uh, decibel rating versus airspeed vertical, it's kind of in the middle of the pack compared to a substantial selection of other fans I chose to run in this test. So that's a pretty good result for this fan. And if we take a look at the same thing, but this time in Sone, it helps accentuate certain other aspects of it and it's still doing quite well. So it's got a fairly basic design, very squared style inlet. The blades get fairly close to the front of it, but not too, too close, which is good. So it should be all right in a pull configuration without it getting too noisy. It's got a little bit of rubber around each of the edges. The back of it, again, it's fairly basic. Thin struts, very flat, so it's going to uh, block air a little bit, but they're thin enough that it shouldn't be too much of a problem. The blade design has plenty of gap between it, indicating that this is more of an airflow type fan, so it's more geared towards cases as opposed to being in a radiator or a AIO type orientation. And the edge distance or gap between the blades and the housing is fairly close, so it's a little bit better than older style fans. So overall, it's very good considering the budget uh, pick that this fan is. And the last test is my CFM testing. It's my least favorite because it doesn't tell you any practical information about how good this fan is inside a computer case. It is basically just a scientific exercise for how good this air fan is at cycling air in and out of a volume, not how good it is at directing it to where you want it to go inside that volume. So... I don't think it's as useful, and I do have a little error over here that should say CFM, not meters per second. I apologize. So, blade efficiency, RPM versus CFM, and it's worse than my control fan. Okay, how about noise? It's worse than my control fan. So, let's move on. Compared to other fans, it's poop. Okay, let's move on. At 100% of fan signaling, well, it's still towards the bottom, so it does not perform well in this test at all. And it's actually underperforming compared to other 1,700 RPM fans a little bit. So, go figure. How about noise versus CFM? Well, it's right towards the bottom. The X2 GP14, which is the stock fan inside of the front design torrent, is one of the few fans that's worse than it. So, let's just keep moving. Alright, we're on to value proposition. And if you're trying to build a case computer on a budget, this is where you want to focus. So first is the six inch mark, and this is performance, so this is meters per second per dollar. The M25 is a $15 fan, last time I checked, and it's right towards the top. And if we take a look at it at 100% pitot fan ceiling, there are only a few fans that outperform it in terms of value. So this is performance per dollar. Once again, I'm repeating myself. So it is a top value pick. At the 11 inch mark, well, it's not quite as high value here, but it is well towards the top. There are only a few that are a better choice. And at 100%, same thing. There are only a few fans that are truly a better choice, especially if you're focusing on that 140 millimeter class fan. How about in terms of CFM? Well, it's not quite as high a peak as we saw in the case simulation type ones, but it is well towards the top. At 100%, same sort of thing, it is well towards the top, but it is not a top value pick. And through the CPU air cooler, I'd be willing to call that a top value pick, including at 100%. So, depending on your use case scenario, it's true, a good fan if you're on a budget. It moves a lot of air and isn't too expensive. And that brings us to the conclusion and my raw data. The raw data does belong to me. If you wish to use it, you may use it for your own personal use. However, if you're going to use it in any sort of written journal, publication, anything that can make you money, I do ask that you reference me and my channel, and you do have to ask my permission first before you use it in such a means. Um, if you got suggestions of ways I can improve my videos, please leave in the comment section down below. If you got suggestions for fans you want me to take a look at or other testing you would like me to do, please that leave that in the comment section down below. I'm always reading them to kind of do the time of experiments and testing that you'll all watch me to do. Uh, if you like the content that I make on this channel, please think about supporting me either by uh, just baseline, signing up for 
my videos and watching them. And if you got the means in the ends, I ask that you think about supporting me as a YouTube member or as a Patreon. That really does go a long way in making this channel possible because right now I'm purchasing this out of my own pocket. And that can only go on for so long, unfortunately. Um, anyways, thank you very much for watching my video. This is Computer Technomore, and I hope to see you next time.